In this video, I'll discuss how to determine equilibrium expressions for reversible chemical reaction processes. In order to do this, we'll be applying a law, which is the law of mass action. Now, in order to understand the law of mass action, let's consider a sample equation where we have A reacting with B to form C and D. So we come up with an equilibrium expression of C raised to the lowercase c power times d raised to the lowercase d for an exponent. This is going to be divided by a raised to the a, b raised to the b. Now, please note the difference between capital letters and lowercase letters in this. The capital letters, these would indicate either a and b reactants or c and d products in the chemical process. The lowercase letters would indicate the coefficients of a balanced equation. So the exponent here would be whatever coefficient is needed in front of product C in order to balance the overall equation. So let's write an equilibrium expression for the process which produces ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen gas. We can see the balanced equation requires three moles of hydrogen to react with one mole of nitrogen, which will allow for the production of two moles of ammonia. So let's write the equilibrium expression for this process. Please note that the exponents, again, are coming from the coefficients used to balance the reaction process. Because we have a coefficient 3 preceding the H2, the hydrogen, will raise H2 to the third power here. And because of the coefficient 2 in front of ammonia, the product will square the amount of ammonia in the equilibrium expression. Here we see another example of a reversible chemical process where ammonium hydrosulfide can be used to form ammonia and hydrogen sulfide gas. Uh, the interesting thing about this one is to consider the fact that the ammonium hydrosulfide here is a solid, whereas the two products are gases. To write the e equilibrium expression for this, we need to understand that any time uh, that we have a solid reactant or product, we will not write this in the equilibrium expression. This means that our equilibrium expression for this process will be NH3 multiplied by H2S. Please note that there are no exponents because we did not need any coefficients to balance this reaction process. One final example of a reversible reaction process is the conversion of dinitrogen tetraoxide into nitrogen dioxide. As this process occurs, it can go either uh, in the forward direction, which is going to produce more nitrogen dioxide. The reverse process is producing the dinitrogen tetraoxide. Once again, let's take a look at writing the equilibrium expression for this reaction process. Because both reactant and product are gases, they'll both appear in the equilibrium expression. The nitrogen dioxide will be raised to an exponent of 2 because of the 2 coefficient used to balance the reaction process. For the N2O4, there is no exponent. It's an implied 1 because there is a 1 here. We don't need to write that, though. 